Hello dear students, in the last classes you have studied about the crystal field theory as well as the magnitude of or the factors affecting the magnitude of the crystal field theory. Now let us move on to the modified crystal field theory or it is also called as the ligand field theory. Before we enter into the actual subject, let me uh, this, let us discuss something about the crystal field theory once again. So crystal field theory assumes that the bond between the metal and the ligand is purely electrostatic. So it is due to the electrostatic attraction and it also assumes that the uh, charge or the uh, d electron can jump from lower energy to higher energy level giving rise to a spectra. And in this case of uh, modified crystal field theory or the d orbitals whichever give rise to the d spectra or dd spectra and the intensities as well as the positions of the DD spectra is not matching with the results which are obtained from the practicals or the experimental sections. So that is why it is also called as one of the limitations of the crystal field theory. And secondly it assumes that electrostatic attraction between the metal and the ligand is seen in all the coordination complexes. However, it is failing to explain the position of the ligands according to this electrostatic attraction. Therefore, a new theory is developed and we call it the modified ligand field theory and it is or the modified crystal field theory or it is the ligand field theory. Therefore, this ligand field theory assumes that there is some other contribution towards the metal and the ligand bonding and is not, not actually the electrostatic attraction. There is also another thing and that another thing is the covalent bonding. Therefore, covalent bonding is also contributing something about the metal and the ligand bonding or the ML bonding. Now if we see that it is the covalent bonding, we will have to have some evidences for that. Without evidence, we cannot prove that it is a covalent bond. So here we are with the sum of the evidences. So we have five evidences for all these uh, covalent bonding nature of the coordination metal complexes. So the first uh, evidence is given by the land is splitting factor G. And the second would be given by the electro, uh, uh, ESR or electron spin resonance spectra and third one is by NMR or the nuclear magnetic resonance spectra and fourth one is from interelectronic repulsion through nephelogsitic effect and the last one and that is through nuclear quadrupole spectral studies or we call it as NQR studies. Let's see one by one and the first one is the land A splitting factor G. So this G value or the land air splitting factor is always used to study the magnetic behavior of the transition metal complexes. However, this G experimentally shows that there is a delocalization of the metal electron into the orbital of the ligand. Therefore, so to some extent the D electrons are getting delocalized into the uh, uh, orbital uh, orbitals of the ligand or the metal uh, electrons are getting delocalized into the ligand orbitals. So this delocalization, uh, delocalization from metal orbital to ligand orbital uh, is due to overlapping. So overlapping of the ligand as well as the metal orbitals can give rise to the covalent bonding. That is why we call it as one of the evidences. The second one we shall move on to the ESR spectra. So ESR spectra or electron spin resonance spectra, it gives the, it is used for the study of the paramagnetic complexes. So this studies shows that, show that there is a presence of unpaired electron in the molecular orbital formed by the metal and the ligand. So therefore, this presence of the unpaired electron in the MO is only due to the overlapping of the atomic orbitals of the ligand as well as the metal. Again, it is needless to say, needless to say that orbital ligand as well as the metal ligand overlapping can rise to a covalent bonding. Third one is due to the NMR studies or the nuclear magnetic resonance spectral studies. So this is studied for the halo complexes. Say we can take it as the 19F or the fluoro complexes of the metal. So in this case there is an interaction between the electron spin and the nuclear spin. Therefore the electron of the metal is interacting with the nuclear spin of the 19F or fluoro 19. And therefore, this interaction is giving rise to the overlapping between the uh, fluoro complex or fluoro ligand as well as the metal. And therefore, in the fluoro complexes of the metal, overlapping is giving rise to some extent of covalent bonding. That is why it is also another kind of the evidence. Now, the fourth one is the important one, what we call it as the nephelogsitic effect. 
Before I move on to the nephrologistic effect, let me say about some let me say something about the interelectronic repulsion. Now let us consider a metal orbital which is partly filled or singly occupied. In that cases, the nearby or the adjacent orbital electron will have an interaction with the another orbital which is singly filled. Therefore, this interaction will give him rise to interelectronic repulsion. So, repulsion increases. So, I am talking about a free metal ion where there is no ligand at all. So, in such a case, the interelectronic repulsions can give rise to many energy levels. So, these energy levels can be uh, determined or can be measured in terms of Raka parameters. So, there will be two parameters one is B parameter and the one is C parameter. Now, this B parameter is used along with the dq if the splitted or uh, if the energy levels are having same spin multiplicity. In case if these energy levels, sets of energy levels are having different spin multiplicities, we can go for the dq and B and C. So, combination of these three is utilized if the energy levels obtained due to interelectronic repulsion of the electron is having different spin multiplicities. So, this is the kind of uh, use of the Raka parameter B and C. Now, it is experimentally shown that if this free metal ion complexes with the ligand, this interelectronic repulsion decreases or we can say that the value of B and C gradually decreases. So, let us see why this decrease is observed. Why one has to get the lower values for B and C? It is because the d orbitals expand into the space or they can extend their charge cloud, electronic charge cloud. Therefore, this expansion of the d orbital lobes or extension of the electronic charge cloud is called as the nephelonxitic effect. Why this extension or the expansion of the d orbital lobes is observed in the complexing metal ion? Why is it not observed in the free metal ion? It is because when the metal ion has to complex with the ligand, it has to overlap with the ligand orbital. Therefore, in order to have an effective overlapping with the ligand orbital, the metal orbital lobe expands into the space and it gives a better overlapping with the ligand orbital. So, again we can say that this overlapping will be giving rise to again a covalent bonding. When they expand into the space, their size becomes larger and now the distance between the two lobes of the d orbitals become less and the di distance r decreases as a result interelectronic repulsion between the d orbital electrons decreases and this is giving rise to lower value of b and c therefore we can conclude in that case that the lower value of b and c is indicating that the metal orbital is overlapping with the ligand orbital and that is another evidence for or the clear evidence for the covalent bonding. So, the last one what we have is the nuclear quadrupole resonance spectral studies. So, in the case of nuclear quadrupole resonance spectral studies, uh, we can have halo complexes. So, these halo complexes shows that the bond between the metal and the halo ligand is partly ionic and partly covalent. Thus, we can also see that NQR study is also depicting that it is due to the covalent bonding and not exactly due to the electrostatic attraction. Therefore, we can conclude that all these factors are giving rise to the uh, new modified crystal field theory and we can call it as the ligand field theory and this is taken for the basis of molecular orbital theory. In the next class, we shall move on to the MO theory or molecular orbital theory of the transition metal complexes. Thank you.